Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel EduTab. I am Arshdeep Kaur and today we will be continuing with the SEBI Act. This is our second video on the SEBI Act. You have to pay a lot of attention to the security laws this time. So please pay attention to the security laws. They are very important for your examination. Alright, before I start, I would like to tell you that EduTab has come up with test series for the phase 2. It in it will include chapter wise tests, it will include full length tests with evaluation and it also gives you one on one mentor support. Plus we have also come up with a live crash course for the phase 2 examination. It includes the live classes, you will also get short notes this time. The test series I have just mentioned they are also included and again you get one on one mentor support. So those of you who have not enrolled yet can refer to the link in the description below. Alright, let's start with the second lecture on the SEBI Act 1992, question number 1. The technical members of the Securities Appellate Tribunal shall be appointed by the central government on the recommendation of the Search Come Selection Committee. Who of the following is not a part of this committee? Let's find out. The answer is option D that is Secretary Department of Home. The Secretary Department of Home is not a part of this committee but the Secretary of the Legal Affairs or the Legislative Department is the part of this committee. Let's read the section 15 MB. The technical member of the Securities Appellate Tribunal, they shall be appointed by the central government but it will be on the recommendation of the Search Come Selection Committee. Remember the name also, it is Search Come Selection Committee. Consisting of the following namely, Presiding Officer of the Securities Appellate Tribunal. Yesterday, we read about the qualifications of the Presiding Officer and other members, right? So, the Presiding Officer of the Securities Appellate Tribunal, it he will be the chairman of this search come selection committee. The secretary department of economic affairs, he is going to be a member. Secretary department of financial services, again member and secretary legislative department or secretary department of legal affairs, member. The secretary department of economic affairs shall be the convener of the search come so, uh, of the search come selection committee. So who is going to be the convener? It will be the secretary of the department of economic affairs and the, the search come selection committee shall determine its procedure for recommending the names of the persons to be appointed under subsection 1. So they will come up with their own procedure which is going to be followed in recommending the names for the technical members. I hope this section is clear to you. Question number 2. The presiding officer or judicial member or technical member of the Securities Appellate Tribunal may not be removed under which of the following circumstances as per section 15Q of the SEBI Act 1992. The question reads as which may not. So the answer to this is D, if he has connected with any political party during the course of his employment, this does not form a part of factor that he can be removed on, right? Let's read this section also, it is section 15Q. The presiding officer or any other member of the Securities Appellate Tribunal may, by notice in writing, under his hand, address to the central government, resign his office. So he will resign to who? He will resign to the central government by giving it a notice in writing. So the presiding officer or any other member of the SAT, they by, may by notice in writing under his hand address to the central government resign his office, provided that presiding officer or any other member shall unless he is permitted by the central government to relinquish his office sooner. If he has been given this permission by the central government to give up his office sooner, in that case it is okay, otherwise he shall hold office until the expiry of three months from the date of receipt of such notice, right? So he has to be in that uh, office for three months such notice or until a person duly appointed as his successor enters upon him, his office or in case his successor has been appointed and he enters in his office in that case he can relinquish his office sooner or there is one more condition until the expiry of his term of the office whichever is earliest so whichever of these conditions is the earliest it is going to be considered right so let's read this again provided that the presiding officer or any other member shall unless he is permitted by the central government to relinquish his office sooner continue to hold office so he will hold office until the expiry of the three months from the date of receipt of the notice either the expiry of the three months or until a person duly appointed as his successor enters upon his office or until the expiry of his term ever is earlier all right 
The central government may, after an inquiry made by the judge of the Supreme Court, remove the presiding officer or the judicial member or the technical member of the Securities Tribunal if the. So the inquiry is made by who? Judge of the Supreme Court, right? And who is going to remove? It is the central government. After the inquiry has been made by who? The judge of the Supreme Court. If he is or at the time has been adjudicated as an insolvent. If he has been declared as an insolvent, in that case he can be removed has become physically or mentally incapable of acting as the presiding officer, judicial or technical member. Either physically or mentally, he is now incapable of discharging his duties. Then also, he has been convicted of an offence which in the opinion of the central government involves a moral turpitude. If he has done some act that is against the standards of the community, in that case also, if the central government thinks that it is such an act, in that case also, he is going to be removed has in the opinion of the central government so abused his position so as to render his continuation in the office detrimental to the public interest. If it is detrimental to public interest, if his staying in that office det is detrimental to the public interest, then also he is going to be removed. Has acquired such financial interest or other interest as is likely to affect prejudiciously his functions as the presiding officer or judicial or technical member. Provided that he shall not be removed from office under clause D and E unless he has been given a reasonable opportunity of being heard in the matter. So in case of D and E clauses, he will be given an opportunity of being heard. His his side is also going to be heard in that case. The central government may by rules regulate the procedure for the investigation of misbehavior or incapacity of the presiding officer or any other member. Right, so the procedure, uh, so the procedure is going to be laid down by who? It is by the central government, right? So the central government may, by rules, regulate the procedure for the investigation for misbehavior or incapacity of presiding officer or any other member. Question number three. If any person is aggrieved by any decision of the Securities Appellate Tribunal, he may file an appeal to the Supreme Court in how many days as per the provisions of Section 15Z of the SEBI Act 1992. So that means that an appeal from the SAT can lie to the Supreme Court and it has to be within, the answer is option D, within 60 days from the date of the communication of the decision or order of the Securities Appellate Tribunal to him on any question of law arising out of such order. Let's read this section. Any person aggrieved by any decision or order of the Securities Appellate Tribunal may file an appeal to the Supreme Court. They can move to the Supreme Court and the period of limitation is 60 days. From the date of the communication of the decision, either from the communication of the decision or from the order, right? Order of the Securities Tribunal to him on any question of law arising out of such order. But it can only be on question of law, right? So it can be only on the question of law arising out of such order. Provided that the Supreme Court may, if it is satisfied that the applicant was prevented by sufficient cause from filing the appeal within the said period, allow it to be filed within a further period not exceeding 60 days. So a relaxation of another 60 days can be given by the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court is of the opinion that the applicant, he was prevented by a sufficient cause. In that case, he can be given another 60 days, but not beyond that, right? So provided that the Supreme Court may, if it is satisfied that the applicant was prevented by the sufficient cause from filing the appeal within the said period, allow it to be filed within a further period not exceeding 60 days. Question number four. In which of the following circumstances, central government can supersede the Securities and Exchange Board of India under the SEBI Act 1992? The answer is option D. That is, all of these are correct. We will be reading all of these in this section only. First of all, what is supersede? Supersede means to replace in authority in effectiveness, right? So, it is supersede, that is to replace, right? So, it is supersede, that is to replace, all right? So, this is section 17. If at any time the central government is of the opinion, the opinion of the central government, that on account of grave emergency, that there has been a grave emergency, the board is unable to discharge the functions and duties imposed on it by or under the provisions of this act. Because of this grave emergency, the board, it is unable to dis discharge the functions and duties that is imposed by this act 
or that the board has persistently made default in complying with any direction issued by the central government under this act or in discharge of the functions and the duties imposed on it by or under the provisions of this act and as a result of such default the financial position of the board or the administration of the board has deteriorated so in case it has been deteriorated then only this section comes into play right so in case the board has made a default and because of that default the financial position of the board has been deteriorated third one that circumstances exist which render it necessary in the public interest so to do the central government may by notification supersede the board for the period for such period not exceeding 6 months as may be specified in the notification so it can be superseded for maximum of 6 months and not more than that right so this is not exceeding 6 months upon the publication of the notification of subsection 1 superseding the board so now what will be the effect of such supersession right first one is all the members shall as from the date of supersession vacate their office as such so all the members all the existing members they are going to vacate their offices all of the past functions and duties which may by or under the provision of this act be exercised or discharged by or on behalf of the board shall until the board is reconstituted under subsection 3 so it will be reconstituted under subsection 3 be exercised and discharged by such person or persons as the central government may direct right right so the other persons who are going to replace the board now they will be carrying all the duties of the board all property owned or controlled by the board shall until the board is reconstituted under subsection 3 vest in the central government and now all the pro and now all the property of the board it shall be vested in the central government on the expiration of the period of supersession specified in the notification issued under subsection 1 the central government may reconstitute the board by a fresh appointment they can reconstitute it by a fresh appointment right and in such case any person or persons who vacated their office under clause a in case it was a grave emergency right a of subsection 2 shall not be deemed disqualified uh, shall not be deemed disqualified for appointment in this fresh appointment the earlier members they can be reappointed in case of clause a clause a was the grave emergency one right so this says and in such case any person or persons who vacated their office under clause a of subsection 2 shall not be deemed disqualified for the appointment provided that the central government may at any time before the expiration of the period of supersession take action under this section so the central government it can reconstitute the board even before the expiration of the term that means before the expiration of the period of supersession as well the central government shall cause a notification issued under subsection 1 and a full report of any action taking, taken under this section. So any action that was taken under this section and the cause of such notification, it will be. And the circumstances leading to such action and why such action was taken, all of this, it will be laid before the House of the Parliament at the earliest. So this has to be laid down before the Parliament. Okay, I hope this section is also clear to you. Moving on, question number five. Special courts established under section two. Section 26A of the SEBI Act 1992 shall consist of single judge who shall be appointed by the central government with the concurrence of. So the answer is C that is the Chief Justice of the High Court within whose jurisdiction the judge to be appointed is working. Let's read the section. The central government may for the purpose of providing speedy trial. So why is the special court constituted for the for providing speedy trial of offences under this act? By notification they can establish or designate. Establish either they can form a new court or designate an existing court. As many special courts as may be necessary. A special court shall consist of a single judge who shall be appointed by the central government. So it will have a single judge and that judge is going to be appointed by the central government but with the concurrence of the chief justice of the high court within whose jurisdiction the judge to be appointed is working. So it will be with the agreement of the chief justice of the high court within whose jurisdiction that judge is working. A person shall not be qualified for appointment as a judge of the special court unless he is immediately before such appointment holding the office of a session judge or an additional session judge as the case may be. 
so the qualification for the special judge is that at least he has to be additional session judge or a session judge right in that case he is eligible to be appointed as a special judge of this court all right question number 6 If a bench of the SAT consisting of two members differ in opinion on any part, what alternatives are available with them? So the answer is option A. That is, they shall state the point or points on which they differ and make a reference to the presiding officer of the Securities Appellate Tribunal. Re let's read this section. It is section 15U, and this is subsection six. If a bench of the Securities Appellate Tribunal, we read about the bench yesterday, right? So, if the bench of SAT consisting of two members, in case uh, they consist of two members and they differ on the opinion of some point, right? Differ in opinion on any point, they shall state the point or points on which they differ, and make reference to the presiding officer or the Securities Appellate Tribunal, who shall either hear the point or points himself or refer the case for hearing. only on such point or points by one or more of the other members of the sat in case there are two members in the bench and they both and they both differ in the opinion relating to one point or some points right in that case that point it is going to be referred to the presiding officer and that presiding officer he can hear it himself or he can refer the same point or points to one or more members of the sat right and such point or point shall be decided according to the opinion of the majority of the members of the sat who have heard the case including those who first heard it so that means now it will be decided according to the opinion of the person who has now heard the points and the original persons original members who were original members of the bench who first heard it it will be the majority of all these members right so in that case it will be the majority of all of these let's read it again if a bench of the securities appellate tribunal consisting of two members differ in opinion on any point they shall state the point or points on which they differ and make a reference to the presiding officer of the securities appellate tribunal who shall either hear the point or points himself or refer the case for hearing only on such point or points by one or more of the other members of the securities appellate tribunal and such point or points shall be decided according to the opinion of the majority of the members of the sat who have heard the case including those who first heard it i hope now this is clear to you question number 7 if any person contravenes or attempts to contravene or even abets to contravene of any provision of the sebi act 1992 or of any rules or regulations made there under he shall be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 10 years or with fine which may extend to 25 crore rupees or both let's read this section also this is section 24 without prejudice to any award of penalty by the adjudicating officer or the board under this act if any person contravenes attempts to contravene or even abets to contravene of the provisions of this act or of any rules regulations made there under so so if he contravenes any provision of the act or even the rules or the regulations then he shall be punished with an imprisonment of a term which may extend to 10 years so it the maximum uh, imprisonment can be in this case 10 years or with fine and the maximum amount of fine can be 25 crore rupees or he can be punished with both if any person fails to pay the penalty imposed by the adjudicating officer or the board in case a fine was imposed to him by the adjudicating officer or the board or fails to comply with any direction or order he shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which shall not be less than 1 month so the minimum amma so the minimum imprisonment in this case will be 1 month but which may extend to 10 years and the maximum can be 10 years or fine which may extend to 25 crore rupees and the maximum amma amount of fine will be 25 crore rupees or he can be punished with both of these also i hope this is also clear to you moving on question number 8 which of the following which of the following authority has the power of compounding under the provisions of section 24a of the sebi act 1992 so who has the power to compound so the answer is c that is the sat the securities appellate tribunal has the power of compounding all right notwithstanding anything contained in the code of civil procedure any offence punishable under this act any offence punishable under this act 
not being an offence punishable with imprisonment only or with imprisonment and also with fine may either before or after the institution of any proceeding be compounded by the securities appellate tribunal or a court before which such proceedings are pending. So, so if in case the offence is such that only deals with fine, the penalty of that offence is only fine. It is not imprisonment, it is not imprisonment and fine, but it is only fine in that case only it can be compounded either by the SAT or any other court before which such proceedings they have, they are pending. And it can be either before or after the institution of proceedings, right? Let's read it again. Any offence punishable under this act, not being an offence punishable with imprisonment only, or with imprisonment and also with fine. So that means the uh, so that means the offences that are punishable only with fine, only that offences are covered in this section. May either before or after the institution of any proceedings be cons be compounded by securities appellate tribunal or a court before which such proceedings are pending. Question number nine. According to subsection 3 of section 11 of the SEBI Act, SEBI shall have the same power as which of the following? So the answer is civil code that is option D, right? So according to subsection 3 of the section 11 of the SEBI Act, SEBI shall have the same powers and as are vested in the civil court under the code of civil procedure while trying a suit in respect of the following matter. So it will so it will have all the powers that are vested in a civil court by the CPC, right? In matters relating to, if the matter is relating to the discovery and the production of books of account and other documents at such place and such time as may be specified in SEBI. In case of discovery, it will have the powers of the civil court summoning and enforcing the attendance of the person and examining them under oath, inspection of any books, registers and other documents of any person and issuing commissions for the examination of the witness or documents. In case a commission has to be sent for the examination of a witness or document, then also they will have the power of the civil, then also they will have the power of a civil court. All right, question number 10. When the SEBI Act came into force, so the SEBI Act came into force on January 30th, 1992 and when was SEBI constituted? It was constituted in April 1992, right? Okay, question number 11. For the discharge of its functions effectively, SEBI has been vested with which of the following powers as per the SEBI Act 1992? So the answer to this is D, that is all of the above. SEBI has all of these powers that are mentioned here to discharge its functions effectively. Let's read what are these powers. Inspect the book of account or financial intermediaries. Inspect the book of account of a financial intermediary. Suspend the intermediaries from doing business on the stock exchange. Inspect the books of accounts and call for periodical returns from recognized stock exchange. So all of these pass, they are vested with the SEBI. SEBI has the, these pass uh, in order to discharge its functions effectively. Next question. As per the SEBI Act 1992, if the board feels that some transactions are not in investors' interest or anyone related to the securities market has violated any law or regulation, it can take which of the following actions? The answer is D, that is A and C. SEBI can ask the person or intermediary associated with the security market to produce books, registers, other documents and records. So it can ask the intermediary to produce such documents and SEBI can ask person or intermediary associated with the security market to examine oath or may ask them to appear in person. And the B part is SEBI can keep books registers in its custody for 12 months. Uh, 12 months is wrong. It should have been 6 months, right? So SEBI can keep books registers in custody for 6 months after which they need to be returned. So SEBI has this power also, but not for 12 months, but it can keep it for 6 months, right? So all statements, they are correct except for B. SEBI can keep books registers in its custody for 6 months after which they have to be returned. Question number 14. Registration of the stockbroker, subbroker, share transfer agent, etc. is mentioned in which of the following sections? The registration of all of these, it has been mentioned in section 12, that is option C. 
let's read section 12 also deals with the registration of the stock broker sub broker share transfer agents etc it mentions no stock broker sub broker share transfer agent banker to an issue trustee or trust deed registrar to an issue merchant banker unright underwriter portfolio manager investment advisor and such other intermediary who may be associated with the securities market shall buy sell or deal in securities except under and in accordance with the conditions of the certificate of registration obtained from the board in accordance with the regulations made under so they have to first take this certificate of registration they have to obtain it by the board right then only they can work a certificate of registration obtained from the board in accordance with the regulations made under this act last question question number 15 what is the penalty for failure to redress investors grievances under the sebi act 1992 so the answer is option d not not be less than 1 lakh rupees but which may extend to 1 lakh rupees for each day during which such failure continues subject to the maximum of 1 crore rupees let's read this section if any listed company if a company is listed or any person who is registered as an intermediary or any intermediary after having been called upon by the board in writing including by any means of electronic communication so in this case electronic communication is valid right to redress the grievances of the investor so in case and so in case a company or an intermediary it has been called by the board to redress the grievances of any investor and such intermediary or such company fails to redress such grievances within the time specified by the board such company or intermediary shall be liable to a penalty which shall not be less than 1 lakh rupees so it cannot be less than 1 lakh rupees and which may extend to 1 lakh rupees for each day during which such failure continues subject to a maximum of 1 crore rupees so the penalty in this case is 1 lakh rupees minimum 1 crore rupees maximum and 1 lakh rupees for each day during which the failure it continues right all right now question for achievers in reference to penalty for non disclosure of acquisition of shares and takeovers under section 15h which of the following is incorrect minimum penalty 10 lakh rupees maximum penalty 25 crore rupees penalty can extend to up to 5 times of the amount of gains made or all of the above so you have to comment the right answer below so that's all for today i hope it was a helpful session for you for more such videos please like share and subscribe to the channel edutab thank you